All right, everybody, as you can see by the title, going to heaven can be easy. Now, none of us have to go to hell. In fact, the scripture says in a book of, I believe it's 2 Peter chapter 3, that God is not willing that any should perish, but for all to come to repentance. See, we don't have to perish if we just all come to repentance. It's just that simple. See, whenever we repent or come to repentance, God just wants us to have a change, a change of way we do things, a change of mind, and he wants us to follow what the way he has set forth. Now, the Bible says that Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. So the way to get to the Father, which is getting to heaven, is by Jesus Christ. Now, it, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So the angel tells Joseph that this child that Mary, his espoused wife, is pregnant with, that this is going this is a child of the Holy Ghost, and that he was gonna save his people from their sins. So that was God's plan was to send Jesus so that he may save us from our sins. Now we all know the popular scripture that I go to quite often, John 3 16, and I'm gonna read through verse 18 because it's very simple. Because the first reason what I want to give to you, I mean, or the first um, thing that we must do is we must believe in God's son. Now, John 3, 16, pay very close attention. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him, whosoever believe it in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. All right. That whosoever believes in God's only begotten son should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we could have everlasting life simply by accepting and believing in God's only begotten son. Verse 17 says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, God don't want the world condemned. God, in fact, want to save the world, but he want to do it by his son. 1 John 4, 14 says, um, let's get that real fast. The book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. And it says, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So we could see that God sent his Son to be our Savior. All right, so God wanted to save the world, but he had a certain way that he wanted to do it, and that's by sending his Son. And it's not, um, God didn't make it difficult. He just wants you to believe and accept his Son, Jesus Christ, and believe in him. All right. Then it goes on to say in John 3, 18, it says, he that believe it on him is not condemned, but he that believe it not is uh, condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So if you don't believe in the one that God sent, then you can't be saved. So God sent his son so that his son can be the mediator between us and him so that we could get to him. That's why the scripture says um, that Jesus himself said, no man coming unto the Father but by me. Because by Jesus, by God's Son, is the way is that God has provided for us to get to him. So that's the ticket to heaven. The ticket to heaven is Jesus. So if you want to get to heaven, then you have to believe in Jesus. Now, I want to look over here. I want to get some more scripture because I like to speak. I like to let the scriptures talk. I like to get the words of Jesus and his apostles and prophets, all right? 
So the book of um, Mark chapter 16, Jesus said in verse 15, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right. He says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So Jesus told his apostles to go out into all the world and preach the gospel, preach the good news of the kingdom of heaven. All right. The good news is that the fact that God sent his son to die for us and that he died, he was buried and he resurrected. So he wanted his apostles to go into all the world and preach that good news to every creature. All right. And he says he that believe and and is baptized. So he didn't el eliminate um, he didn't single it out to just believe it. He said he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved but he that believe it not shall be damned so now if you believe you will be saved but he also added baptized and so why does he want you to be baptized now jesus told his apostles also in matthew chapter 28 verse 19 he says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost so it's something about this baptism that Jesus want us to have and see and that's the problem that many people fight against the baptism they say that the baptism is is not important all right but let's look over at, at the book of John chapter 3 because I want to give you the words of Jesus when he was speaking with Nicodemus now John chapter 3 starting in verse 3 says Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God so not only did you have to have faith in God's son but Jesus also said you have to be born again all right so in verse 4 Nicodemus said unto him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born see Nicodemus didn't understand what Jesus was saying he think he's talking about a, a, a actual physical birth and jesus answered in verse five verily verily or truly truly i say unto you except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god all right so you have to be born of the water and of the spirit many people associate the water to being the word well you are you do have to have the word but jesus all he said water all right and, and the more scripture proves it all right so he says also that you have to be um, born of water and of spirit the bible says that if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his so we need to have god's spirit now the purpose of the baptism in case you're wondering it, it speaks to us in the book of Romans chapter 6. Now Romans chapter 6. It says in verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us. As were baptized into Jesus Christ. Were baptized unto his death. Therefore we are buried with him. By baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead. By the glory of the father. We uh, even so we should. Um, we also should walk. In newness of life. So. We are planted together in his death when, when we have baptism. And see, and see, some people say, well, that's talking about the baptism of the spirit. But the book of Acts chapter 2, it tells us um, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, we have the apostle Peter saying, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So not only did Peter mention being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. But then he says, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So there's two different things that's being taken place there. And we can also see in scripture how in the book of Acts chapter 5, Simon understood exactly um, what, that this baptism is water. See, now it says in the book of Acts chapter 8, and let's look at verse number, um, let's see here. Let's look at verse, I'm sorry, oh, I said Simon, however, I mean the Ethiopian, so excuse me on that. So let's look at verse number 37, well, th 36, and as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. See, so they going, they traveling, they's in a chariot, all right? They going on their way, and they come to a certain water, okay? They come to water. They didn't come to the word. They was already in the word, but they came to a certain water. And the units said, 
He said, um, here, he say, see, here is water. What do hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. So he had to believe with all his heart before he could be baptized. But notice the scripture said they came to a certain water. All right. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water. Okay, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. So they understood that what Jesus was saying, he that believing in um, um that you have to believe, he said, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. So that baptism it, cons it consists of being born in the uh in the water, or being buried in the water. All right. So when Jesus said in John three. Um, three through five, that you must be born again and be born of water and spirit, we can understand that that water is simply referring to physical water that you must go down in, in the name of Jesus Christ, because we are buried, we are buried with him by baptism into his death so that we could, just like he rose from the dead, we could rise from the dead. Jesus, um, it, it symbolizes the death in the burial in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's the same thing he wants to do with us if we still, if we happen to have to die before he returns. All right. So, and the thing about it is many people make baptism hard. It's not hard. To be honest with you, baptism can take less than one minute. It could take less than one minute. All you got to do, two people go down there, two believers, one say, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, raise you out the water. That don't even take 30 seconds. So why fight against something that's so simple and so easy and it happens so fast? It's not that big of a deal. Now, I, so I mentioned how you must believe in God's son, but another thing you must do is you must repent. Now, we have to repent, all right? We can, that's why Jesus said you must be born again. So when you're born again, you are repenting of an old way of life. You being born again, you taking on a new life. So now in the book of Luke chapter 13, at verse number three, Jesus says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now, um, now we got Jesus here. He's uh, referring to the, the Galileans, right? Because he says in verse one, there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. And Jesus answered and said unto them. So he's talking about some that had told him of the Galileans. And he told them that except he says, uh, ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So it so it's something about repentance. He he uh, he mentions it again in verse five. He says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So that's why the book of Second Peter chapter three tells us, For God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we have to have repentance if we want to enter into the kingdom of God. Let's look at the book of uh, John chapter 5, and let's look at verse number 14. Now, John 5, 14 says, Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. So Jesus is talking to this man that he had healed, but Jesus told him to sin no more or something worse was going to come in was going to um, take place, all right? It's going to come upon him if he, you know, if he didn't um, sin no more. And he also told the woman that was caught in adultery in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 11, Jesus told her, he said, um, well, in verse number 11, she said, no man, Lord, and Jesus said unto him, to her, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. So Jesus won't condemn you if you just simply repent. He says, sin no more. All right. So, um, and so repentance is definitely something that we must do. Now, I want to show you some scripture here that show that, you know, certain ways will keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. Now, the book of first Corinthians chapter six, verse nine and 10 says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So remember, we're talking about repentance. And now Paul says that, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? He says, Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, 
He says, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So you don't want to be of any of those things that he mentioned because if you are, you will not inherit the kingdom of God, okay? And so, and he, and he told them, he said, but such were some of you. See, they were that, but they repentant. See, they was washed, but you are sanctified and justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So they repented. That's why Paul says, and such were some of you. So y'all used to be there. That was something that they were in the past. Now let's look at um, Galatians chapter 5. The book of Galatians chapter 5, let's look at verse 19 through 21. And we got Paul saying, now the works of the flesh are manifest or they're made known. He says, which are these? Now, these are works of the flesh, adultery, fornication. This is some things Paul mentioned to the Corinthians. Uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay. And he also says uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. He said emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I also as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we have to repent of those things. We cannot remain in any of those things that he mentioned. We must repent. Remember, Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So what it comes down to, to all of us, to all of mankind, all right, we all, no matter who you are, if you was born, then this applies to all of us. Like Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 9, verse 27, even Paul, he says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So, you know, he didn't want to be a, 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 a or cast away or disqualified after he done all that preaching. See, so, but he says that he, he keep under his body or he keep his body, he bring it under subjection. So we have to bring our bodies under subjection because like the scripture says, the, the spirit, you know, the body, the flesh, it wars against the spirit. In fact, let's get some words of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 26. And let's look at verse number 41. Now, Jesus says here, he says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. So watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. So don't enter into the temptation. He says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So our spirit is willing, all right? But the flesh itself is weak. So the flesh don't want to yield to the spirit. So we have to um, watch and pray that we enter not, and we got to bring our bodies under subjection. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans chapter 7, verse number 18 says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. All right? So in our flesh, it, it dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. He So... So he says in verse 21, he's, no, this, this is 19, he says, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. All right? He says, now, if I do that, I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So it's the sin that dwells in us that makes us disobey God. It's the sin that's in us that causes us to not perform that which is good. In verse uh, 21, he says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, all right? He says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So that inward man, the spirit of us, is, is, it delights in the law of God. He says, but I see another law in my members. That's in, in his flesh. In my members, warned against the law of my mind and bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. All right. So there is sin in our bodies. We have to bring our bodies under subjection. All right. And then he goes on to say, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He says, so in, and this is who will deliver us. He says, I thank God. So it's God. He says, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. 
And he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. He didn't stop there. He also says, who walk, after, who walk not after the flesh. Remember, we just read the works of the flesh. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there is no condemnation when we walk after the spirit, because the spirit is not going to lead you to live in according to your flesh. All right. Now, let's look over at, um, let's look at Matthew again, chapter 16. And I want to read verse number 25. Matthew 16, 25. Um, it says, then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. That's 15. Matthew 16, 25. And it says here, Jesus says, well, let's start at 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me. Now, remember, Jesus is our mediator. No man come to the father, but by him. So we got to come to Jesus in order to get to the Father. And Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So if we want to come to Jesus in order to get to God, who is in the kingdom of heaven, well, first he says we need to deny ourselves. We need to take up our cross and follow him. So we got to die to ourselves. All right. And he says, for, whos for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So we have to lose our lives. We got to lose all of our sinful passions. We have to lose everything that's contrary to the will of God in our lives if we want to save our lives. But if we want to save our life and keep all those things, then Jesus says we're going to lose our life. And you're going to lose it how? Well, you're going to lose it in the end. Whenever you um, stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to end up separated from God, which the only separation is going to end up being in the lake of fire. So we do have to bring these bodies under subjection. Now, the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12, verse 2, it, you know, it talks about the mind. See, it's something that we must do with our mind to help us to um, be on track with God. Um, Paul says, Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world. Well, we know that, you know, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, that's of the world. All right. So he says that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. So we don't want to be like the world conformed to the world, but we want to be transformed by the renewing of our, your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we could prove what's that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God by transforming ourselves, by renewing our minds. So we have to renew our minds from being according, from um, living according to the world or being conformed to the world and just be transformed into the things of God. So we have to transform ourselves. Now, God was very... Um, happy with his son, Jesus. And I want to show you something, why God was happy with Jesus. And we want God to be happy with us like this, um, by the same way. Look at Hebrews chapter one, verse 8 and 9. Hebrews 1, 8 and 9. It says, but unto the son, he said, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now look, here it is here. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. See, Jesus loved righteousness and he hated iniquity. Remember when he drove the people out the temple for selling in the temple of God? He said, in the scripture said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. So he loved righteousness and he hated iniquity. All right. Remember, he told a woman called a nurture, go and sin no more. He told the man he healed, sin no more unless a worse thing come on you. Because he loved righteousness, he hated iniquity. All right. And he says, even he saw, therefore, God, even thy God had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So because Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity, God anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows. All right. So and we want God to be that way towards us. Now, um, now, the last thing that we all must do is we must keep the commandments. Now, people say, well, well, we're not under the law. 
Well, yeah, we're not under the law. But let's look at Revelation chapter 14 because, see, the Bible tells us that, you know what, I'm going to go to this real fast because we don't keep all the law of Moses, like, you know, like the ceremonial laws and things like that. But the, the, but the law is not going to... Um, the Spirit of God, when you walk in the Spirit, is not going to lead you to um, live contrary to the commandments of God. Now, in the book of Romans chapter 8, let's look at verse 1 again. I want to read through 4. I want to show you what I'm talking about. So, because we're not under the law, but we in the Spirit. So, but when we walk in the Spirit, the Spirit is not contrary um, to the commandments of God. Now, Romans 8, 1, it says, there is... Therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do. See, this is why we're not under the law. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. See, our flesh would find it hard to follow the law. That law of Moses was hard through the flesh. But it says God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So God sent his son for sin to condemn sin, all right, in the flesh. And he says here that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the righteousness of the law, it will be fulfilled when we walk after the spirit. So we not under the law because it's weak through the flesh, but we walk according to the spirit. So no, we not under the law of Moses. We under the spirit. We should walk in the spirit. And we're, excuse me, and when we walk in the spirit, it will cause us to fulfill the, the righteousness of the law. All right? So when we walk in the Spirit, it's going to lead us to do the things of, you know, follow Jesus. And when we follow in Jesus in Christ, well, he's the end of the law for righteousness. So following him, we, um, we're going to automatically fulfill the righteousness of the law because God still requires that we be like him. It says, be ye holy for the Lord thy God is holy. All right. So let's look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Revelation 14, 12 says this. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, so notice how we keep the commandments, the saints. They keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. But they keep the commandments by walking in the spirit. So, but they also have the faith of Jesus. So God is still concerned with us believing in having faith in his son, Jesus Christ. All right. Let's look at first John chapter five, verse three. First John chapter five, verse three. It says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So the love of God displayed in us is when we keep his commandments. In his commandments, the Bible says, it's not grievous. His, his commandments is not burdensome. It's not that difficult to keep. How hard is it to just thou sh to follow the thou shalt not, for example? But when we walk in the spirit, the spirit not going to cause us to, you know, commit any of those, um, break any of those commandments. It's not going to cause us to um, live in adultery. It's not going to cause us to live in covetousness and fornication and, and bearing false witness and, you know, and um, unbelief and, and denying God's son. Jesus says if you deny him, he will deny you before his father in heaven. So we still have to have the faith of Jesus as we read in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 and that says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. 
So you are blessed if you do his commandments and that you may have the right to the tree of life. Well, having the right to the tree of life, that's going to be the tree of, of everlasting life. All right. Remember, God had to remove the tree out the garden because Adam and Eve committed sin. So God had to remove what well, he had to remove them out the garden rather. And he put an angel up. He put an angel up with a sword, a flaming sword to protect it. All right. So he drove Adam and Eve out there going to that, that tree of life. But that tree of life comes in also in this holy city here. And so you want to do his commandments and just walk in the spirit and you will do his commandments. All right. So other than that, going to heaven can be easy. So you have to believe in God's son. You have to repent. You must be born again. And you must keep his commandments. All right. So if you haven't, you know, you have to repent. I got to repent. We all have to repent because God is not willing that any of us will perish. So I say repent. Turn to Jesus. Believe in him. Live for him. Walk in the spirit. Ask God to bless you and baptize you with his Holy Spirit. Get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And let's all crucify our flesh. Let's turn down the desires of this flesh because it's enmity with God. This flesh don't want to obey God, but let's make our flesh obey God. All right. And let's walk in the spirit. So other than that, you pray for me and I pray for you that we all may be strong and last until the end, and we may all have a right to the tree of life and that we may enter in through the gates into the city. All right? Let's, let's make it to New Jerusalem, y'all. <laughs>